I'm Janine Kapler with the Palos Heights Public Library. I'm Kathleen Krauss, also with the Palos Heights Public Library. And we're back with our show Then and Now, where we take a look at local history hidden in plain sight. And Catherine, with your background, you know many of you know Catherine from the library. Um, she, she works extensively with our local history collection and was uh, working and worked with the Story of Palos Heights video project. And um, Janine, you also know she works at the library, working extensively with archives. She's also um, the author of the Arcadia Local History book on Palos Park. Right. And so we bring our interest of local history and we're bringing it out to you. And uh, we're going to start, what are we going to start with today, Catherine? Today we're going to start talking about the Palos Heights Gun Club. And Gun Club? Wait. Yeah. But let me show you a picture because I know a lot of people probably don't even realize there was a gun club in Palos Heights. Right. Let's take a look at it. Wow. Here we're starting with the gun club in the 1940s. Um, and I just, um, I wonder if uh, you would know, it's actually um, one of the city's premier recreation areas. Can you think of you know so what this that is a, might be? This is an aerial view of the gun club in Palos Heights in the 1940s, right? It is, yeah. So, uh, what is this big road here? I'm seeing a road behind it. So that road um, is actually College Drive today. So in the 40s they called it uh, 119th. That's right, 119th. Uh -huh. Oh my God, is that the Cal Sag on the top of the photo there on the top? Oh, of yeah, yeah, you can see the bridge up there. Yeah, so right along the edge there is the Cal Sag all along there. So that's where Lake Catherine is. That's right. My oh God, started off as a gun club. It started off as a gun club. Yeah. Um, now when you you know you're walking the at Lake Catherine, you would never know that back a recreational area before then, but it was a recreational area in a different way. Um, very good. Yeah. A very different way, yeah. Um, let me go to show you another photo here in 1939. You can see that the um, a few people actually shooting at the gun club. Yeah, you know, um, people might be um, uh, amazed to know that gun clubs were a big form of entertainment back in the day. Um, Palos Park had a huge one, a German shooting club, and people from all over the country would come, go to those, those clubs to have competitions. They had um, shoot, sharp shooting competitions and, you know, skill. Um, and one of the old timers told me that, you know, back in the day before they had, you know, Sunday afternoon football or whatever, that was a form of, of, of sporting uh, and some competition and also gathering, uh, a social gathering areas too. And it looks like um, you have something about the Windy Cindy wind up, wind up here too. I do, yeah. So that they started, it went from just being a very small gun club to as it grew through the years, um, they had different competitions. And one of them, which is a pretty large competition, um, was the Windy City wind up. So this one particular one was from 1938. But people would come like from all over the Chicagoland area um, to take part in it. Um, and because of you know the that many people coming, they would they expanded their facilities, and you know you could see just all the cars there, and all the they had um, you know a lot of people coming out just to take part in it. Like you said, it was um, this was a big form of recreation. They didn't have the same you know the same versions of recreation that we had now, so this was a major part of what people did. So 1948, this was a good 10 years before they we became a city, Palos Heights actually became a city. This was still unincorporated as a community. That's right, yeah. I mean, this was, so Palos Heights didn't incorporate until 1959. So this was um, predated the, the actual city itself. And, um, and so we have so, another, how big it grew? What's that? We have another photo of how big it grew. Yeah. yeah. Um, in 1948, let me, if it's gonna come back up here. All right. In 1948, that's looking um, southeast of the Palos Heights Gun Club, right there. Um, so you can see it's it had expanded some more versus that first picture with like the different spots where they were like from. Bays there. Yeah, and even more cars parked in. They weren't even, you know, they had to expand beyond the parking lot even. Uh -huh. uh, but so yeah. 
must have been a big shooting day. And I know that a lot of people, when they talked about the old shooting club in Palos Park, people could say like on Sunday afternoons, you could hear the shot, the sound of gunshot, you know, for all afternoon, you know, kind of a funny thing, you know? Yeah, and you figure, I mean, there were people living, you could see the houses right across the, the street there. So how loud it must have been for all the, the people living there right in their new, these new, this new suburb that was, um, you know, people just right down the street there. It's funny when you when you look at the Catherine, the houses back there. That's like you're talking. You're saying that's College Drive, 119, right? And the intersecting streets at 75th, and then the top, uh, the top of the photograph at 74th Avenue. You see, there's there's no houses and no trees, you know. Right, and that's the things people talk a lot about now about Pillows Heights. You know, the trees. They love the trees here. And you can see there weren't that many trees. It didn't start that way, right? No, no, it was all, you know, it all started off as farmland um, when people were coming out here. So the trees all, you know, came later. Yeah, so. I mean, 1948, that's just three years after the end of the, 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 the Second World War. Right. So soldiers are just coming back from fighting and, um, you know, lives are changing. And so people were moving out of the city into more of the suburbs at that time. I think we talked about that at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of a big post-war boom coming out here, and that's what really got Palos Heights to grow quite a bit. Um, and, you know, it, as the years went by, after the 40s, it grew even more. Uh, okay. And let me show you the, what it looked like in the 1970s, because that'll give you quite a bit different view. Than just oh my God, the neighborhood, it, that is really grown. Look at all the houses that have uh, been built and the trees that have grown. Mm -hmm. And even the gun club, look how many, there's eight shooting bays there now. Um, yeah, and is that the, um, a clubhouse I see that they built? Yeah, they built a clubhouse, um, and they because they again we're still expanding. So the clubhouse um, was the late 1969 is when they um, came up with the idea to build that, and um, and so that was a pretty new structure here in the 70s. And yeah, you can see um, the just how much bigger everything is just in that short amount of time. You know, the trees have all grown up. There's um, just a lot more growth in the area. So uh, how long was the gun club there, Catherine? The gun club stayed there uh, until um, 1986 when it moved to Frankfurt. Um, and, the, you know, just with all that growth, it just didn't have, they, they needed to move further out um, at that I'm point. Sure, I'm sure all of those houses loved hearing the, the guns shooting, you know. Sure, yeah. And yeah. So, but with that, them leaving, that's it, it opened up that area to, to change it into something else. Um, which, and because it was empty there, it was kind of a little bit of, people called it like a wasteland or a dumping site. Um, well, didn't they have problems with the, um, the lead shot that was left there from, the, gun, from the, the bullets that were, or the shells that were spent, right? They did, so you saw like where they were shooting into was that big vacant area there. Um, but that they weren't, you know, all of that shot just sat there for years. And so when they decided that they were going to change this into something else, they didn't really know, you know, like um, what what you could do because it had all of that. And but so they had to remove all of that shot in order to decide, you know, that to make like Catherine after that because it was contaminated. Yeah, yeah. And um, the mayor in the 1980s, that was Eugene Simpson. But he was the one that actually came up with the idea. But they could put a nature center there on that abandoned site. Um, yeah, it's kind of amazing because I know my um, husband's family had just moved at this time and he remembers people just dumping stuff in this land. So I mean it was kind of a wasteland junkyard looking thing. So to have an image or uh, an idea of doing something very different with it or making a, a spot of uh, beauty and nature is quite a big jump. So what do these plants look like? We've got the plans that they first came up with um, in the 80s of what they wanted to actually do at the site. So you can see they, you know, envisioned a waterfall, they envisioned a lake, um, and just a lot of green space. Um, they wanted it to be like a Northwoods theme when they first when they first planned it, um, and just a place for people to come. That would have been so different from that waste site that was there. Right, and I remember someone saying that they, they had to dig out the contaminated uh, soil because of the lead, um, and that's what created the, the body of Lake Catherine. Right, yeah, so 
you know, after digging it out, then they had this basin where they could actually, yeah, create a lake. Okay. And there you can see the, um, the beautiful waterfall that they created shortly after um, they finished the work here. And, um, and just how different from those wasteland photos and from the gun club, how, just how much different it looks. You're going for more of a Nordic theme or? Yeah, they, uh, Northwoods, they said that, you know, Eugene Simpson was kind of inspired by the, by the Northwoods of Wisconsin and wanted to bring that into um, Phyllis Heights. Um, as they moved on actually like into more recently, they've shifted to a more natural um, theme to kind of bring in more of the native plants that would have been in the area originally. So um, let me show you now. Wow. The difference, yeah. So like especially you can see on the um, on the right photos now just how much that's changed. It's you know they've the lake now with the native plants, and then all the way back on the left you can see 1938 of the Gun Club. Yeah, and again, I'm just amazed at the amount of land and how, I mean, that's farmland. I mean, there's nothing out here. 1938, um, a good 12 years before it became a city and all the, the none, none of the condos are built there, none of the office buildings that are there. Um, right. Still see the canal at the top of the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, that was built before then, um, the 1920s, finished. Um, but, and now, so it went from one, one, like you mentioned earlier, went kind of a, one kind of a recreation of, you know, skill and shooting and I, to a, a, an, another type of recreation. Of course, it's a nature and um, botanical gardens now, uh, focusing on the care of nature and that kind of thing. But people are there out there every day walking around Lake Catherine, getting their, their recreation in of a different type. Right, it's such a popular spot now, just for, yeah, being able to just um, be involved in nature. It's a great- it is, It's a huge premier spot of, in our city. Is, yeah. Let me show you one more um, view of that site back in the 80s before they developed it into Lake Catherine now. Such a big difference. Yeah, it's such a big difference. And so there, there's a bit of history then and now, right? Just that one more with the clubhouse. I wanted to mention about how that's changed um, from the 1969 artist rendition there. And then they actually moved it. Um, in 1989 to its present location. That was closer to um, um, the, the road, right? Right, yeah. Um, it was just off of College Drive. Mm -hmm. So they put it on wheels and they moved it up to the current location. Yeah, and when you go up to it today, you can, when you're walking to the stores, if you look um, right above the doors, there's that gun club um, plaque that, you know, you could see that leftover from its days as the actual gun club clubhouse. Yeah, so, yeah, that's like, that's kind of a, you know, hunt and seek kind of thing. So next time, folks, you go into the clubhouse or you're walking past it when you're at Lake Catherine doing your laps around the lake, take a peek above the doors of the clubhouse. You're going to see that plaque up there above the doors. And that's going to be your bit of history um, of then and now. Exactly. So what do we have next, Catherine? Now we have a bit of What's our a next local history mystery. A local history mystery that um, now you would not, a lot of people wouldn't even, they might remember it um, from before, but now if you're looking around, you wonder, well, where, where is this today? Um, the Palis Heights School, here shown in 1941. And um, we kind of would say that it only lives on in people's memories now because it was it's completely gone and, and changed the site. So this is no longer, this, this school is no longer here in town. In right. Town. Okay. Yeah, it um, was built um, right in the early 40s and it's now today, yeah, it's, you would never know where it's at. So um, where, where was it located? It was located at 127th and 69th Court. Um, and it was actually start, the land itself was donated um, by the real estate developer in the area, Robert Bartlett. He was, as he was developing the new, um, the new town, the new subdivisions there, he donated this land um, as, the, as it was growing to be a school right about 1940. And I can show you the dedication photos as well. Um, they had this big dedication ceremony. You can see there are tons of people that came out for it. Um, band. I love that. 
Right. Yeah. And they, you know, I think they even came in from other towns, from other areas to take part in this dedication um, and just see how, how big of a thing it was for, for everyone to, you know, that this school was there, that this, you know, for this new, for this new developing area, that there was going to be this school for all the children. 1941, that's still in the height of World War II. Um, I mean, maybe we were not even, I don't know what part of 1941 this still was. Yeah, I'm not sure which month this was, so it probably was um, before we were even, you know, involved in the war. And, um, but, you well, know. well before we were a city again. So this is, again, an unincorporated time. Um, they, they built a school. Um, obviously, we need, had a need for it. You can see all of the land that's around it. We don't have any houses around that yet off the corner of 69th Court and 127th Street. So what else did it, what, what other photos do you have of that? Yeah, okay, so it was there for how long? It was there, yeah, for, um, it operated as a, as a school um, up until um, it was closed in 1975. Um, they, you can see it looks a little different there. They did expand the school um, quite a few times in between just because this, you can see they built it in 41, not realizing how quickly everything was going to be built up in the area with post-war growth. And so several times it was um, expanded and um, they just, they quickly outgrew it. So that they had to, you know, build other schools in the area. And then by 75, they had to just completely close it because it just didn't serve a purpose anymore. So um, by then they decided that they were gonna have to tear it down. Um, in 1989, we have those demolition photos. Wow. So it sat vacant for a while if it closed in 70... 75, yeah. So, and like that, those photos in the last one were 77. They, it sat vacant um, all the way until from 75 to 89, so 14 years. Um, and they tore it down. Like, people were really, they felt, had um, strong feelings about the school. Um, I've read, you know, some different accounts of people just the sadness that they felt when they were tearing it down just because it was so connected to people's memories their childhood memories of going to the school right. uh, you know i don't you know they just didn't have a use for it anymore but people still they loved the school yeah and here you can see on that that photo um it does highlight the arch there which i'm going to show you another view of the okay. arch is kind of that a symbol of the school there and they were able to save it um and it was moved to lake catherine um, to preserve it. Oh, cool. And that's, um, today if you go there, it's uh, the the children's forest at Lake Captain, if you've never seen it before, but if you go over there and-, and Get you know, another shot of that, yeah. yeah. But there, now we can also see what it, the site looks like today. Um, it's now a townhouse development is what they built. Um, in place of the school. So it's, you would never even, if you're driving by it today, I'm sure you've driv driven by it a ton of times and it doesn't look anything like it used to look. Right, I wonder if, for those of you who are newer to the community would not have known that a school was there, a school was there for over 30, so 40 years or something. Um, and yeah, so that's a bit, the, the local history mystery, that's just something that we don't, you know, we're, we're so, we see things every day and we don't realize the history that's behind them. Exactly. Yeah, so what's, yeah, so that's what it looked like then, and that's what it looks like now. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're looking off, we're on 69th Court looking at the, the building. Right, yeah, at the, um, at the school site there, or the, yeah, the townhouse, so it's um, quite a bit different, <laughs> you know, just the, the years in between have changed it quite a bit. Yeah. And let me show you one more view of the, the arch, and the arch today, I, this is, the photo on the bottom left is um, one of my favorites of the Pete. There are um, several PTA moms standing in front of the arch. Uh, and so you can just see the arch in the different ways through the 40s of with them in front of it to the arch in the 70s to it now as a like a um, preserved like memorial of the school can be really, you know, it's, it's Pretty incredible. Yeah, and it's a it's an appropriate place out by the Children's Garden in Lake Catherine, um, kind of a memorial to the lives of all the children that had gone through the doors and the lives that were enriched and um, changed and you know and that's something. And you walk past Lake Catherine uh, again, that's a bit of history hidden in plain sight. Um, what else is that it there, Catherine? All we've got today. So that's our then and now for this this time. Oh my God. So. 
Well, we talked about the Gun Club. We talked about Lake Catherine. We talked about the old school uh, off of 69th Court, 127th. And of course, um, the pieces of history that you can still see around the city today. So Catherine, thank you so much for, for sharing your, your wealth of knowledge with us. Um, and thank you folks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, have a good one. We'll see you. Yeah.